When October hits, there are a few records that I listen to every Halloween season. And it's hard to say exactly why, but for some reason, these particular records always remind me of Halloween. It could be when they were released, it could be when I first bought them, or just the feeling they give me when I listen to these records. And I would bet that the last record I show you today, you have never heard of. I bet. We'll see. And today's episode of The Joy of Vinyl was brought to you by The Tube Store. I've been a customer of The Tube Store for a couple of years now, and it's no secret that I love tubes. And if you love tubes too, they have you covered. Check the link in the description. Now, I've always loved top 10 lists. And when I was thinking about this episode and what you know albums I wanted to include, pulled them all out, and coincidentally, there were 10 albums. So we'll call this the top 10 list for Halloween, or you could just say top 10 list for October if you'd rather. But anyway, I'm going to save the weirdest one for last, but we're going to start with this one, and this is in no particular order. But number one on my list is Black Sabbath's first album. Now, I remember buying this record back in 1981, and I was already, I think I was 14 or 15 years old, something around there. And I remember I was a huge fan of Ozzy, and I had just purchased his, I think his first record at the time, and couldn't get enough. I listened to it over and over and over. And I didn't know a lot about his previous bands, you know, that being Black Sabbath. And one night I was listening to WBCN. I think it was late on a Sunday night. Uh, maybe it was Oedipus, I, I, the DJ Oedipus. I, I can't recall. But anyway, I was listening and they played NIB from this album. And I immediately was like, that's Ozzy Osbourne. So I went out and bought the record I, I probably within two or three days. Always loved this record. And there's something about it too. The woman on the front, She's creepy enough, and I always wondered, is she a witch or something? And a fun fact about this album is that woman on the front cover was tracked down like 50 years later and interviewed, so it's no longer a mystery of who she is. Right from the start, with its opening thunderstorm and church bell, you know you're in for an ominous dark ride, and especially at night if you listen to it at night, which I plan to do. So we're going to move on to Number two on my list, another favorite band of mine, Blue Oyster Cult, Fire of Unknown Origin. This was released in 1981, and while it's really not meant to be scary, it does have its moments. And I remember when I bought this, again, 1981, 14 or 15 years old, right around there, listening to this at night the very first time. And I was laying on the couch, had my eyes closed, and I was playing side two, and the song Joan Crawford has risen from the grave came on. I wasn't expecting it. it had that creepy piano intro, which reminded me of Phantom of the Opera. And then the song started and it, Eric Bloom singing, and then it gets to that whispering voice of what you can only assume to be the ghost of Joan Crawford. And it spooked the hell out of me, <laughs> I recall. And it's still, to this day, I still get that same, I kind of get goosebumps listening to it because I remember listening to it 50, what was that, how many years ago? I'm bad with math. 44 years ago, it still it still does it to me. As with most Blue Oyster Cult records, it's a mix of you know horror and science fiction and dark fantasy. And another fun fact, Patti Smith, the poet and musician, in, on her 1979 album Wave, actually has an early version of the song Fire of Unknown Origin, which BOC covers. It's the opening track and the title track of the album. Next up, and what is Halloween? without this guy, Alice Cooper. And we're talking about the Alice Cooper Show. Now, this was recorded live at the Aladdin Theater in Las Vegas in 1977, the same year it was released. I was 10 years old. I can't believe it's been that long and this record's that old. But anyway, it plays like a greatest hits record. It's got 18, it's got, is it my, you know, is it my body? Uh, sick Things, I Love the Dead, another creepy, creepy song. And it's got his ballads like Only You and Me, or You and Me, I'm sorry, it's called You and Me, and I Never Cry, and Only Women Bleed. It's a great album, and I can only imagine what the live set was like and the live performance with the guillotines and everything else that Alice did back at that time. I first owned this album on 8-track tape. I am that old. Now, here's one that might surprise you. The next one is Iron Maiden's 
fear of the dark. Now, you might be wondering why I'm including this record. It's not everybody's favorite Iron Maiden record. If you're a fan of Iron Maiden, chances are this might be down the list, maybe number 10 or something. But I love this record, always have. There's something, there's something creepy about it. Even the cover itself, when you look at the cover, that creature on the front reminds me of, remember the movie Pumpkinhead back in the late 80s? That creature reminds me of Pumpkinhead. So maybe that has something to do with it. But I love the record. I love listening to it when everything's dark, late at night with the lights off. It it's, puts me in the Halloween spirit. And this was the last album that they did with Bruce Dickinson during that era, prior to him returning in, I think it was 2000 with Brave New World. And this record has a, has a spooky vibe to it. So that's why it made my top 10 list of, of Halloween records to listen to this month. The next one, since we're on records that usually aren't at the forefront of somebody's first choice when it comes to certain bands. We're going to revisit Black Sabbath, and I'm talking about Born Again. I've talked about this album before. Now, Born Again is usually, you either love it or you hate it. It's despised by some fans of Black Sabbath and loved by many, and I'm one of the ones that love it. And the singer was Ian Gillen, or is Ian Gillen. Ian Gillen is the front man vocalist on this record. He used to be the singer for Deep Purple, actually still is. He's still touring with Deep Purple. But when this came out, I remember I was extremely excited. It was 1983. This came out, I think, three days before Halloween, right around that time in 1983. Bought the record. This coincidentally also was the very first tour I ever saw, first concert I ever saw with Black Sabbath and Ian Gillen fronting it. And the opening act was Quiet Riot. It was Portland, Maine, November 6th, 1983. Yeah. But again, creepy record. The whole thing, you've got Ian screaming his way through it. Disturbing the Priest is a great example of a spooky song. And then you have Trashed, another spooky song. It opens the album and it sets the tone for the entire record. If you can get past the cover, people hate the cover. I happen to like it. But if you can get past the cover and just listen to the music and don't even think of it as being Black Sabbath, just listen to the music. It's straight out of a horror movie. Now, speaking of Sabbath, this one isn't a Sabbath record, but it's as close as you're going to get to a Sabbath record without it being Sabbath. And I'm talking about 1982's Speak of the Devil from Ozzy Osbourne. Now, this record he recorded live, and it came out a month before Sabbath released Live Evil. That was their live album. Well, this record was Ozzy kind of giving the middle finger to his former bandmates. And I have to say, if you compare the two, Live Evil and this one, this one sounds better because you've got Ozzy singing. Nothing against Ronnie James Dio. Absolutely love the guy. You know, rest in peace, Ronnie. This record just, to me, blows it away. And you can't get past the cover. I mean, look at the cover. I mean, that's, that's Ozzy in all his glory back in the early 80s. The next one is actually new to my list. And we're not going back to the 1980s or the 1970s or even the early 90s, like you know, Fear of the Dark. This one is just two years old. It was recorded or released October 28th, I think, in 2022. And it's The Damned... Night of a Thousand Vampires. The cover is the epitome of Halloween. We just look at it. And this was recorded October 28th, 2021, I believe. And then it was released in 2022. And I've always thought while listening to this that if you've ever read the interview of the Vampire series by Anne Rice, there's a book in the series, Vampire Lestat. And Lestat is, or in that particular book, he fronts a rock band. And I always thought that if that were real, if if Lestat really had a band, this is what it would sound like. It's got great songs on it for Halloween, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Absinthe. And I think, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde came from their Black album, which is another, actually another good one to include on a list I probably should have. But this one's a little bit better to include. It's live, got all of their, you know, some of their hits and it's got that horror feel and you just kind of wish you were in the audience and the recording itself is brilliant. And they actually do a cover of People Are Strange by The Doors, which brings me to the next one, which may be a little bit of a surprise for including on a Halloween October list of records, but I'm talking about The Doors' first album, their debut album. 
And the reason I have it on here, it's a very dark album. Out of all of their records, this is probably their darkest. Might not be my favorite, but I love this record. And when it came out, you got to remember, this was 1967. There was nothing like this out there with, you know, Ray Manzarek's keyboards and the way that Robbie Krieger played the guitar. It was very different sounding. And the time that this came out, number one on the charts was uh, The Monkees, I'm a Believer. So that was the kind of music people were listening to. And then the Doors hit the scene with this album. And they set the stage for everything that was going to come after with their music, but they never quite captured the darkness of this very first album. I bet you even Charles Manson was creeped out by it. Speaking of Charles Manson, there's a connection to the next album I'm going to show you. It's, has, it really has nothing to do with Charles Manson, but I'm going to get to that in just a second. So the next one is Jim Carroll's Catholic Boy. Now, I have talked about this one before too. For I think it was on the episode I did about albums that people don't know about but should and this is one of those albums and it does have some creepy songs on it it's kind of a punk new wave album came out in i forget the exact date it was early 80s i believe or maybe it was 1979 regardless of when it came out it was right around that time it has the song people who died and it that song was played to death on wbcn back in the day and every time it came on the radio you just were transfixed by it by the lyrics, by the music, by the way Jim Carroll sang it. And he also has the song, another song that was a minor hit at the time. It was called It's Too Late. And this is the, this is the Manson connection I was referring to because it has the line on it, it's too late to fall in love with Sharon Tate. And if you know who Sharon Tate is, you'll, you'll get the connection. All right, we've reached the end. And this is the album. The next one is the album I bet you have never heard of. And if you do have this album, if somebody out there has this album, I would really love to hear from you. And it, it's not a music album either. It's, it has nothing to do with music, although it does have one song on it. And it's this album, Sounds of Terror. <laughs> it does have one song, like I said. It's got Bobby Boris Pickett's Monster Mash. Kicks off the album. The rest of it is a walk through horror. I don't know who created this album because there's no credits on it. And it's also cataloged as a children's album. It has, this is not for children. I mean, there's some of the, the tracks on here. Oh, there's no tracks listed on the back. No, it's on the front. Some of the tracks on here is Jack the Ripper, uh, Terrors from Outer Space, Buried Alive, The Grotesque Phantom of the Opera, Nightmare of Lost Souls. And it's, like I said, it's a walk through through hell I mean, there's screams there's creepy sounds the people who did put it together knew what they were doing i mean you listen to this with the lights off and you're going to be turning the lights on pretty quick yeah let me just play one little excerpt because it's not music i'm hoping i don't get dinged for copyright but you know check this out there's witch burning there's beheading and there's also the sound of a giant crab eating someone and i don't like i said there's no credits so i have no idea who the woman is that they had do the screams but her screams will haunt you and so i would have been like 10 maybe 11 years old when when i ended up with this record and i can't believe i listened to this i'm surprised i turned out okay or did i so there's my list and i'd love to hear what you thought about it and also if you have this record because sometimes i think i'm the only one that owns it but if you, know, if you enjoyed the episode, please like and subscribe. And in the immortal words of Orson Welles at the end of War of the Worlds, if your doorbell rings and there's nobody there, that's no Martian. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Mm -hmm.